Um, really, really good to be able to play some lineups tonight for with some kids uh, that don't traditionally play together. A chance to see what could possibly look like in case we face COVID later in the year. Um, after a slow start, felt like we've found the best shot pretty much every trip down the floor, except for just a handful. Um, and to play at that pace and, and only turn it over five times, really good attention to detail, not looking at the scoreboard, not playing your opponent, but playing yourselves uh, in an atmosphere. Uh, no, no overlooking them uh, with what is ahead of us on the weekend. Focus was very, very good. And again, we learned a lot about you know, how to how to prepare ourselves for a game in, in this COVID era of no shoot arounds and no, uh, not, not your normal uh, pregame warmups. But I do think that still becomes part of our slow start. So we're going to keep tweaking some of that stuff. Jason, go ahead. Yeah, just how you guys were, Michaela said you guys got the shots you wanted early in the game. They just weren't falling, but then they started falling. You took the shots and they played the, unsel or, you know, the selfish basketball like you wanted them to play. Yeah, and it, it uh, you know, good, better, best is kind of something we worked on in film. And, and I thought we got the best shot we could have possibly gotten on every one of those first few possessions. They were the right people. They were in rhythm. Just didn't go down. And, and, and I think it has a lot to do with how we're warming up, you know, and how we prepare on day of game. So we just got to settle into that, get used to it. Um, but I, I would take those same shots. And I was there was no panic in those guys. They all came over and said, keep shooting those same ones. They'll start falling. Um, you know, we drove it in there. I, I didn't necessarily like the four straight threes. I would have liked to have seen one of them say, hey, you know what, we need to try to drive it in there and see if we can get a foul. But, but you know, that's something we can always be picky on in a game that's a, that's a blowout win. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, just, just kind of start with that. I, I looked at it. If you take away the first five misses, you were 17 of 20. And, and like you said, a different, you know, different shots seem like, Several, I mean, not settling for threes, not all of them drive, just a variety. So yep. that's what you want, right? That is exactly what we want. We, we got a new little toy uh, that shows shot distribution and shot selection. It's your, not your standard old shot chart like I grew up with, with a pencil, you know, as close. It, it really breaks it down into all these areas. And our kids really devoured that through the first four games. And, and, and they talked about it during practice. Let's make sure – we're getting the right people, the right shots in the right spot at the right time. And, you know, you look through the shot distribution and, um, you know, the way it, the way it turned out tonight, it was very, very balanced, uh, very even. I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six in double figures again. And, you know, that just is, um, to me, through, through this number of games, I think we've got four or five kids averaging double figures. That's really, really, um, that makes us really proud. Porter, go ahead. Coach, I want to talk about Aaron Barnum and just how her presence coming off the bench. She's just been solid every game coming off the bench and a career high tonight. So I just want to kind of touch on on her and how big that's going to be coming in a key matchup Sunday. Well, you know, she's uh, she gives us a spark immediately. You know, Taylor gets out there and, and wears their big down, running, 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 and then they're still in the game, and here comes Aaron Fresh. Uh, and she's got as quick a first step and as slow a second step as you've ever seen. You know, that, that old man YMCA step through, get into your body, doesn't look like it's going in. That's really hard to defend. Uh, she's playing very confidently. Her teammates have a lot of confidence in her. She's really defending as well. Um, showed flashes of that in practice at times two years ago. You know, we couldn't guard her uh, during the year that she said it, was up here and, and didn't play. And then last year, you know, in, in practice and in a lot of games was a, a really uh, a spark for us. But now she's steady. She's solid. She's got her academics in line. She's really got a good plan for, for things. And, and that's that maturity, you know. And her teammates know, and her and Taylor have a really good uh, tag team rapport uh, about how they go about doing their business. And, you know, I look up every night and we're getting, you know, uh, 19 and 10 out of those guys or 19 and 16 or whatever that is, that's, that's great production. And it'll be big because, you know, Baylor's obviously got a lot of size. They, they will have four kids uh, bigger than us in there. So we're going to need, uh, it was good to get Macy and, and McGee and Oberg some minutes too. They all, all, all that uh, rotation that Chantel and Pauline work with every day did a really good job tonight. You got a chance to see flash of how good of a passer Oberg is and, and what a problem McGee is down there on the block. 
uh, when she gets it with position. Jason, go ahead. I'm wondering about Jalen Mason and just kind of where she is right now, kind of trying to figure out the role that, that you have for her with this team and, and what you've seen from her these first five games. She's in every one of our best lineups. If you chart our, you know, our top seven to 10 lineups, she's in every single one of them. She plays three positions. She knows exactly where to move the ball. Uh, if, you know, if people charted hockey assists, she would lead the country. Uh, sometimes it's just a cut. It's not even a pass. She keeps the ball moving. The ball does not stall. You know, and she comes in for that first sub and, and she plays one position. And then about two minutes later, we get another sub. She slides to another one. Then we have a third sub and she slides to a third position. So, you know, that is that you couldn't just ask anybody to do that. You have to ask somebody that's been around, somebody that knows and has got the, uh, the poise and the confidence to be able to do, uh, to do that. Um, you know, and she's going to make open shots. That's the problem. You know, when people forget that what spot she's in, there she is to knock down a, a wide open three. Uh, I think the ball will start to find her more as the year goes along because people will recognize uh, that the other players are, are really scoring as a result of the actions that Jalen's create. And I think they'll stop. They'll start not coming off and they'll make us throw it back to her. Uh, and I got, uh, I, I just put a lot of trust and a lot of faith uh, in that kid because she knows this system uh, as well as anybody we got. Paul, go ahead. Just uh, moving on to Baylor, you, you talked about, uh, you know, their size and, and they just put a lot of pressure on you in a lot of ways defensively. Um, what sticks out to you about Baylor? Well, just that if, if you're not committed to rebound, they're going to literally score every possession. I mean, they just – their first shot is rarely their best shot. It's that second and the third and the fourth that end up being uh, at two feet uh, with Egbo and Alisa Smith and, um, you know, their guards driving in there. They're very, very, um, very, very physical, very rugged. They, would, they will play inside of 10 feet if, they would, if, if it's up to them. Uh, we've got to do a good job of, of stretching them a little bit. Uh, we've got to get every single loose ball. You don't knock off a team that's, you know, in the top four in the country without – um, having some breaks go your way. So loose balls will be very, very important. You know, they've got the National Defensive Player of the Year and D.D. Richards playing, um, you know, after a, a scary injury. It was good to see her back on the floor the other night. Um, but she will be able to guard anybody that we put out there on the, on the floor. She can guard one through five and do a great job of it. And that allows those other kids uh, to come in and, and affect shots and, and rebound behind it and go. So, um, you know, it'll be it'll be a combination of, of Maryland and Wake Forest type deal that we've seen. Uh, but again, I, I, the, the fact that we've played people like that gives me a little comfort that we won't be near as, uh, you know, maybe big eyed as we were when we ran into Maryland down there a week ago. But, you know, Baylor Hall of Fame coach, Hall of Fame program, the, 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 the standard bearer, I think defending national champs is going to still stick with them because uh, we didn't crown one last year. So. That pretty much uh, speaks for itself when it goes to that. And I, I agree with y'all. I think we would have um, had a great crowd. I think we'll fill this thing up to everybody that uh, it, it'll, it'll reach its max, I think, come Sunday. Porter, go ahead. Porter, you're muted, man. You're muted, Port. Porter. You're on mute. You win the prize. Yep. Porter wins the prize. Sorry. Uh, I'll claim my prize tomorrow. That's um, right. It's a free oven mitt. <laughs> I was talking about how important is it going to be get those tweaks in that you need to keep from there being a slow start because, you know, you play in Baylor. That's, it's going to be hard to not be able to come off a five-minute stretch and or your first five shots and get behind early. Yeah, and you combine that with I think we missed nine of our first ten the other night in here, and it just – you do that, and you're down 10 nothing, and that's almost an insurmountable lead against Baylor. They just don't give up leads like that. So um, we're going to keep working at it. I, I don't know what the answer is, and, and nobody does. You know, no, I can't call Coach Blair or Vic or Kevin McGuff or these guys that I've worked for for years and go, hey, what would y'all do the last time you had a pandemic uh, when you couldn't do shoot-around? You know, other than Blair, and I don't think anybody remembers 1919, but um, he wasn't <laughs> coaching yet, but uh, he – he would probably have some memories of it, but I, I don't know. I, we're going to keep working at it. We're, we, we're probably going to try to do some things in practice, you know, come out of the locker room a little different, but uh, i tell you the other thing you might do is just, we might not even talk about it. Might just even say, Hey, you know what? Don't you, because if you talk about it, you kind of make it a deal. 
let's just not talk about it. Let's just keep doing what we're doing and, and get better at it, not necessarily change something. Uh, but yeah, imperative to get off to a great start. I, I think too, uh, I think there will be a big enough crowd when we call the hogs, it, it, you'll be able to hear the people, not the piped in music. You know, that, that's, that buzz of a sound that we have in there is almost like my white noise sound when I sleep at night. You know, so it, it's got to – I'm going to see if we can change our, our piped-in sound to maybe some industrial sounds or uh, banging on some pipes or airplanes landing or something. I don't know. Um, but we've, we've got to do something. Otherwise, you, you find yourself in a hole against an opponent. It would be really hard to come back against. Any other questions for Coach? Yep, Jason. Hey, Coach, just the opportunity that you have here. I mean, I, I don't think there's ever been a bigger non-conference game in this arena. Yep. The opportunity, you know, whatever happens, but the opportunity to showcase your program where it is right now on Sunday for a national audience. And our, our kids were talking about it the other day. They were like, this is why we came here. You know, we came here to be able to attract a game like that. There, there wouldn't be a – when the SEC and the Big 12 were sitting around doing challenges for the last few years, they certainly weren't going to send Baylor here. Uh, and I think the kids understand they wear it as a kind of a little bit of badge of honor. Um, and, and we're going to do our best to, to represent the SEC when it comes to that challenge. But, you know, for our fans, you know, I, I think a lot of people probably would have shied away from it and said, ah, maybe give us somebody else. Don't give us the them. But our fans deserve it. They've built this place into a true home court advantage for us. Um, and we just felt like that it was too great of an opportunity to, to pass up. Uh, and I know our kids, all of our players that have, have come here, and you talk to Jalen and, and Grace and Macy that were here from the beginning, it, it's got a different feel about it. People have been talking about it around town. As you hear about it on the radio, and we saw advertisements on TV. So I think for them to see that that's part of a very, very small reward, and, and for a, a thank you to our fans for, for doing what they've done in the past three years to allow us to play a game of that magnitude. Quarter last one. Yeah, just touching on that, you know, last year, you, you know, with the team being experienced this year, you know, you played your hard-fought games against Texas A&M and South Carolina. So I think, you know, how important is that, knowing that they have showed up in the big games, especially with their wins over Mississippi State and Texas A&M, how is that going to help come Sunday? I think it just calms you. You know, you can draw back on past experience and you're not – I mean, we don't have that delay, David and Goliath talk. I'm not going to go in there with some – you know, speech that is not normal. I mean, it's just you go do what we do because we have been in those settings in those environments. Um, and, and that um, experience, them being able to say to the kids that don't have it, you know, some of these kids don't have it yet that we're counting on, they can say to them, hey, it's okay. We, we're prepared for this. Be ready to go when your number gets called. Them just being able to tell stories to each other uh, the next three days. You know, they were already starting to talk about it tonight. I, I heard talk about it, you know, right as the game was, the, the clock was going off, like, hey, no celebrating, don't go out, wear your masks. You know, if you notice that we were socially distanced, we didn't go in at halftime. We're doing every single thing we can possibly do to avoid contact tracing so that we can play as many games as possible. And we, we sure want to make sure this one on Sunday goes, goes on. All right, everybody. See you Sunday. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yes, sir.